Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. And good morning from South Victory. State Rep Ramon Romero is first up and he is fired up this morning. But let's also get you caught up on some other political happenings we are also watching. Wendy Davis is returning to politics. She's reportedly running for Congress. Davis is a former state senator from Fort Worth. A Democrat had an unsuccessful run for governor against Greg Abbott in 2014. Now Davis is apparently going to run against Congressman Chip Roy in a district stretching from San Antonio up to Austin. Planned Parenthood fired its executive director. Reportedly, it wants to take a more aggressive approach. As you see here, we had Dr. Liana Wynn on this program back in March. Last week, though, Planned Parenthood's board met and got rid of Dr. Wynn after she spent only eight months on the job. And he is a fixture in Fort Worth. Dr. T.A. Sims has been on the Fort Worth School Board for more than 35 years, but he's walking away from it. No specific reason given. Dr. Sims is in his late 70s, though. How migrants are held on our southern border has disappointed and disgusted people all around the world. Texas lawmakers, though, want to do something about that. And they met last week to brainstorm exactly what might be done. On that committee was State Rep Ramon Romero Jr., a Fort Worth Democrat. And joining the questioning, as always, is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Good to see you again, Ramon. Glad to be here, Jason. Let's Let's talk about the uh, the, the House Committee, the International Relations and Economic Development Committee, met on this humanitarian crisis. What concrete, though, came out of this? That we have a humanitarian crisis that currently um, the consensus is has been really left up to civil society. Civil society has been charged with uh, dealing with these folks once they've come across the border, and the state of Texas isn't, uh, in my opinion, doing its part yet. And we need to talk about how we can best utilize the resources we have uh, to deal with the humanitarian side, not just the law enforcement side. Well, yeah, well, clearly they're putting money and, and, and state guard and state troopers down there for the law enforcement side, but the legislature doesn't meet again for two years. Right. I mean, to budget money to do something with the humanitarian side. What can be done between now and then on the state level? Well, I mean, that was a question that I asked Stephen McCraw, Colonel McCraw, uh, and, and his He's answer the head was, of DPS. The head of DPS, and his answer was really simple. My job is I'm a law enforcement officer, and I'm there to, to make sure that these people know that they need to go somewhere else beside the state of Texas. The fact is, look, McAllen, Texas is the first place that these, the majority of these migrants are coming. South Texas is the front line for these asylum seekers, and we have to deal with that. Whether Stephen McCraw wants to do it, but state, the legislature needs to act. Uh, I believe the, the, the committee was still a little bit politically divided along lines, uh, but those people that are down there doing the good work, the humanitarian work, they don't have an option in this. They're doing it and they're tired. Uh, and it's having an effect on our border communities all the way up to San Antonio uh, when these people have to land somewhere. But, but will the state actually do something before the legislature meets again in 2021? Only if enough people in the state of Texas reach out to Governor Abbott and say that this is an emergency item, that whether you have to bring the legislature back, you have to deal with it. Uh, the, the status quo, what we're doing right now, is not working, and it's hurting families everywhere, not just those migrants along the border. I'm on there was a lot of talk last week about the tweet, go back where you came from. Is that <laughs> something where you, that anybody's ever told you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've heard it. I've been called a wetback. I've been called many things, go home and so on and so forth. But look, this is my country. I'm an American. I pledge I pledge to our flag. Uh, I swear to the constitution of this country. And, and by that, look, I'm not going anywhere. This is my country. This is my home. This is where I'm going to raise my kids. And this just reminds me of what it was like back in the 70s when black, black people were moving into white communities and so on and the violence that occurred way back then. You know, I had my femur broken when I was four years old because I wasn't dark enough for my community. What happened? I'm, uh, I had a gentleman push me off, not a gentleman, I had a, a, a young man push me off of my porch and jump on me and broke my femur uh, because, because he felt like it. And that was the kind of violence that happened over in Southeast Fort Worth back in the early 70s. I was, it was 1977. Uh, Trump is one of those parents uh, that didn't like that, that community changing. And that's what we're having. We're having a change in America, the same as we've had these changes in the past. And it's unfortunate that our leader isn't willing to accept how far we had come. I mean, we had come through some really nice times. I think maybe it took disco music, you know, maybe it took a little hip hop to change us and kind of bring us together. I'm not really sure what it's going to take. I think it's going to take a leader that understands diversity and multiculturalism. And I think that we'll, we have a, a good future ahead of us. I'm, I'm really sick and tired of seeing people telling me that the sky is falling, that we're in desperate times, that America is falling apart. It's not falling apart. We're in a temporary funk, and we're going to get out of it when Americans and Texans right now, specifically to your point, Scott, reach out to our leaders, who you elected, yeah. reach out to them and say, these are not my values, whatever your religion is from, and we need to do something about it now. You know, Republicans used to say we should welcome legal immigrants and celebrate free enterprise, family yeah. values. We had a poll from Pew last week, the first time 
maybe a long, long time, Republicans now believe we're too open, we're losing our American identity. When you hear that, you know, what's your reaction? You know, they probably still enjoy Indian food and Mexican food and Colombian food and all the things that make this a rich nation. This nation is, this nation is rich. Uh, our immigrant community makes it more rich. We're more diverse. Uh, there's, there's different music. We love, we love music. I think that this is just a time where it's just become really easy to say things like send her back, uh, build a wall, lock her up. These little short little three, three word uh, bite, sound bites. Look, we're, this is not our nation. Right now, what we are experiencing as Americans, this is not the United States of America. And it's going to change. And we have to call those statements out and, and, and talk to our neighbors and say, look, I have, a, I have a best friend who's from India, and I love the way they raise their child. I love the culture that they have of family. Those are the things that tie us together, not just simply the color of our skin. And it's real easy for just as those things condition us and if you can give Trump credit for one thing, is he is he's, he's manipulating American minds right now to say these people are different and they are the problem, rather than saying what are the things that can bring us together. We have about a minute left here. I want to ask you about the Democratic push to take over the Texas House. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, anticipation and perhaps confidence that that might happen uh, after the next election. What do you think Democrats will need to do to physically reach that milestone, that threshold? Keep continuing to tell the story of what happened this year in the 86th legislative session. Look, I mean, it changed from the 85th to the 86th because we picked up 12 seats. Not just Democrats, but Republicans changed. Republicans moved more to the center. And if Texans want to see all Texas move to the center and start doing the things that are going to lower their property taxes, that are going to properly fund education, that we're going to deal with mental health issues, that we're going to deal with school security, and we're going to do all those things, we have to realize that democracy was never intended to be one-third, two-thirds. And that's where we've been for a long time. When we are closer to 75, 75, we're going to do good things. I just hope that we get at least a 76, 74. Are you Kamala or Julio? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right on the fence right now with both of them. I actually love both uh, Kamala's passion and Julio's uh, just total comprehension of the issues. And he's really been laying it out for a lot of folks. Uh, he's, he's got ideas and he's got plans yeah. behind them. So I'm really, I'm really confident in both of them. I'd like to see them uh, be some of our last picks. All right, State Rep. Ramon Romero Jr. from Fort Worth. Good to see you again. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, buddy.